Canadians love investing in dividend paying stocks. The problem though is most of them are paid quarterly or every three months. But a lot of investors would like a monthly income from dividends in order to pay off expenses or to make other investments. In this video, I'll go over my top picks for the best monthly dividend stocks in Canada. Hey, what's going on? It's Chris here from Wealth Awesome. Few assets come close to the comfort and consistency of dividends when earning passive income. They are usually reliable, relatively safe against market fluctuations, and typically offer higher returns than, say, a savings account. One thing that bugs me though, and probably other dividend investors as well, is that most companies pay quarterly dividends. So for some months, you might be getting a hefty amount, and for others, almost nothing. Thankfully though, there is an easy solution to this, and that is monthly dividend stocks. And if you wanna earn a consistent monthly income through dividends, take a look at this video. I think you'll find it very useful. Make sure you stick around till after the list is finished, and I'll go over what I think about monthly dividend stocks, how I recommend people use them in their investment portfolio. So if you're interested in learning about that, stick around. Also, make sure you check out the written article about this if you get lost. Uh, I've written an article about this on wealthawesome.com, and it goes into topic in way more detail. All right, so here we go with number one. So I've ordered these in terms of lowest dividends to highest. And the first one I start with is uh, Northland Power Stock. While Northland Power has a relatively small yield, it's a very stable payout. And whatever it lacks in the dividend department, it makes up for in the capital growth. Even though Northland Power isn't a dividend aristocrat, its payouts can be considered very safe and dependable, thanks to the nature of its business. It's a power producer that focuses on clean and green energy and has considerable power generating assets. The company owns assets of about $11.5 billion and they are capable of producing almost three gigawatts of energy. The energy sources include offshore wind, thermal, onshore wind, and solar, with the first two making up about 80% of the company's total power generating capacity. Most of its facilities are concentrated in North America, with a few offshore wind farms near Europe and Taiwan. Geographic diversification for this stock isn't that extensive, but a presence in those markets might allow the company to expand farther. Parkland Fuel Stock. Dividend aristocrats that pay monthly dividends are relatively rare, but not completely unheard of. And Parkland is one of them. The company has been growing its dividends for seven consecutive years. The growth rate isn't too powerful, but if the company is going through the trouble of only marginally increasing its payouts, the chances are that it won't drastically slash its dividends in the future. The payout ratio currently seems dangerously high, but the company has seen worse and has grown its dividends even when the payout ratio grew over 300% in 2017. Parkland has a strong balance sheet and is growing its revenues year over year at an incredible pace. Parkland is an independent fuel supplier and marketer and has a network of retail fuel stations and convenience stores, which is most dense in Canada and the US but it is present in 25 different countries, but the bulk of its revenues are generated in North America. The company has three principal operating divisions. The first one is retail, the second one is logistics, and the third is marketing. This helps because it doesn't have to rely quite heavily on third-party vendors, and it's relatively self-sufficient. Next stock is Granite REIT stock. So here's the first REIT entry into this list, and spoiler alert, there are going to be a lot of REITs on this list because a decent proportion of REITs pay monthly dividends, which make them perfect for predictable dividend income. Granite is also a dividend aristocrat and the oldest one in the real estate sector with nine consecutive years of its dividend increases under its belt. It also happens to be one of the best growth stocks in the sector so that it will be a fine addition to your portfolio in terms of its dividends. The yield is also decent enough that if you buy it at the right time, that is during a market downturn or a real estate bubble burst, you might be looking to lock in a juicy 4% yield or more. The company has a globally diversified portfolio, that is, its portfolios are located in nine different countries, but the distribution is not very even. Out of its 97 income producing properties, 43 are in the US and 26 are in Canada. The rest are in Europe. What makes Granite a very decent investment, apart from its stellar dividend history and capital growth potential, is its asset class. The company owns and operates logistics properties, which in this e-commerce heavy economy is a prized real estate asset class. Number four is Killam Apartment REIT stock. Killam is another growth oriented REIT, but 
it still does grow its dividend. Still, the 3.8% yield monthly dividends and a very safe payout ratio make it a good addition to any portfolio. As the name implies, the bulk of Killam's net operating income, or 89% of it, comes from apartment properties. The rest is divided between commercial and manufactured homes. The total portfolio is worth over $3.5 billion, including over 16,000 apartments and over 5,000 manufactured homes with almost 1 million square foot of commercial space. The portfolio is geographically concentrated in Halifax, New Brunswick, and Ontario. The safety of Killam's monthly dividends comes from its continuously growing rental-based net income. The company focuses on developing and maintaining good quality properties, and its very high occupancy rate suggests that it's a good enough landlord. Even if the dividends don't grow, the capital growth potential is powerful enough to cover for it. Number five is Northview Apartment REIT. This monthly dividend paying REIT offers a very juicy yield at a very safe payout ratio. But the stock isn't a dud in the growth department either. Its capital growth potential rivals that of Killam's and it comes to a much higher dividend yield. The REIT has a solid balance sheet and has been steadily growing its revenue for the past five years. Total assets of the company are worth about $4 billion and it comprises of 27,000 residential units, 344 executive suites, and over 1 million square feet of commercial space. Northview's portfolio is more evenly distributed among provinces and territories. As one of the largest multifamily landlord in the industry and the largest in several areas, Northview doesn't face a lot of competition. Number six is Transalta Renewables Stock. So here's another energy producer on this list. This one focuses on hydroelectric power as well as wind farms, gas, and solar power. The company has 44 fully functioning facilities in the country and also a few in Australia and long-term contracts along with them. The contracts provide relative security to the company and comfort that someone would be buying the power that they are producing. It has 23 wind farms, one solar power facility, seven natural gas powered plants, and 13 hydropower facilities. The diversified asset portfolio works in the company's favor. Despite long-term contracts and sizable revenue growth in the past five years, the company has been sporting a very high payout ratio for quite a while now. One reason might be that the company invests a lot of its money in acquiring new facilities and expanding its current facilities. With a very decent yield and a futuristic approach towards energy production, Transalta's future seems safe and bright and with it your dividends if you choose to invest in this company. However, it's not a very consistent growth stock so keep an eye out for that. Next up on the list is First National Financial Stock. Though a mortgage company doesn't seem like a very wise investment, especially if you think that the real estate bubble will burst sometime in the future, First National is an exception. It's an eight-year-old dividend aristocrat with a very juicy yield and a reasonable payout ratio despite what the real estate sector went through in 2020. 6% yield is enough to get you $50 a month in dividends if you invest $10,000 in the company. And since it's a dividend aristocrat, that amount will likely increase in the future. The company hasn't grown its market value very steadily in the past but it does have capital growth potential. Unlike many other companies on this list, First National is quite exposed to market downturns and recession, but it hasn't stopped it from dishing out dividends every month, not yet at least. Next stock is the Exchange Income Fund stock. Exchange Income Fund is a powerful dividend aristocrat with a history of increasing dividends for nine consecutive years. 2020 though has been a rough year for the company because of the industry it's in, that is air travel. Despite having a very diversified portfolio of underlying businesses that include material companies, manufacturing plants, regional air services, custom helicopters, and a flight college, the company saw its stock go down by over 68% during the 2020 crash. That also drove the yield up though, and even though the payout ratio seems dangerously high, the company has kept growing its dividend through the worst payout ratios. It was never a very decent growth stock to begin with, and it might take a lot of time to recover, but the dividends are likely to continue to grow if air travel comes back. The balance sheet is strong, and once the company takes off from the slump that it's trapped in, the payout ratio could come under control as well. Next stock is Atrium Mortgage Stock. The company has a monthly payout frequency and a very generous yield of 7.7%, which makes it a perfect opportunity for dividend investors. Both the stock appreciation and the company's payout ratio have been very consistent in the past, 
And even though it's increased its market value over the years very slowly, the growth has been very steady. The 7.7 .7 yield is sizable enough to give you a monthly amount that rivals the average OAS pension if you invest $100,000 in the company. The company's assets are almost double its liabilities and its operating income is growing quite steadily. It's a non-bank lender, which allows it to furnish loans and mortgages for properties and projects not covered by traditional lenders and banks. This also allows the company to charge a premium. By focusing on urban area properties, the company ensures that most of its money is tied up to desirable locations and properties. Timber Creek Financial Stock. Timber Creek is another non-bank lender, but it specializes in commercial properties, an industry that's both highly profitable or a loss magnet, depending on the asset you are investing in. It offers mortgages to multifamily properties, office and retail properties, primarily in urban markets across the company. More than half the mortgage loans are tied to multifamily properties. The balance sheet is in good shape and the yield itself is reason enough to buy into this stock. Though the payout ratio is a bit high, so be wary of that. The company doesn't offer much capital growth, but the stock price usually stays pretty steady. The dividend seems relatively safe for now, and many people would have to default on their mortgages or dividends to be in serious danger. Next up is Pembina Pipeline Stock. The energy sector is full of decent dividend stocks, but very few of them offer monthly dividends. Pembina with its monstrous yield is one of them. It's one of the largest players in the energy sector and also one of the relatively more safer ones. Most energy companies are tied up very tightly to oil prices and prospects, but pipeline stocks generate most of their revenues from long-term contracts, so they're less exposed to oil price fluctuations. So even if the oil prices go down, the income of companies like Pembina doesn't suffer as much as exploration and refining related companies, but it's not completely immune of course to the market downturn, hence the high payout ratio. But the company has sustained its dividend through the worst and it's likely to continue as the economy improves. Plus, it's an eight-year-old dividend aristocrat, so it will most likely maintain its dividend growth streak and hopefully keep increasing its dividends for the foreseeable future. And lastly, but not least, is RioCan REIT stock. RioCan has been a darling of dividend investors and it's known for its very high yield. It's one of the largest REITs in the country and focuses on retail and mixed use properties in major urban hubs around the country. This Toronto-based REIT has a portfolio of 221 properties. Total asset value is over $15 billion. The geographical distribution is concentrated mostly in Ontario, where about 52% of its locations are based in. The company didn't suffer as badly as it could have because a major portion of its retail portfolio is anchored by the grocery business. So when the retail took a hit in 2020 and this year, it wasn't too bad for the company. The yield is high enough that even if you invest just one year of your TFSA contributions or $6,000 in the company, you'd earn almost $50 a month just in dividends. So how to buy monthly dividend paying stocks in Canada? Well, Simple Trade offers free buy and sells for Canadian dividend stocks on their platform and it's the only one in Canada that has this feature. Questrade is also an excellent provider, but they don't offer free buys and sells. You will have to pay a commission on it. I would consider both of them. They're both excellent companies. With Questrade, you could get a $50 free stock commission sign up bonus when you sign up with the description below. And same with Well Simple Trade, you could get a $10 sign up bonus. So check it out. So how should you use monthly dividend stocks? I'll give you some scenarios of how you should use it. They're good for if you need the income monthly. For example, if you're retired and you have expenses that you wanna pay for every month, or maybe you even want to invest in something else, you could take out that money and put it towards that investment. All right, so if you create an equally weighted portfolio out of these 12 stocks, you'll get an average yield of about 6%, and that's enough to start a sizable passive income if you can invest a large amount. All right, since you made this far, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos or tips like these. Also, be sure to check out the blog, wealthawesome.com. I talk a lot about stocks and investments in ETFs, and I've written many, many articles on that. It's one of the fastest growing blogs in Canada, so check it out. And as always, thanks for listening.